The first topic we're going to be talking about is personal growth, personal growth. And I know a lot of people talk about that, but personal growth for me is really extremely important. When we talk about leadership, leaders that don't develop themselves are ineffective, okay? And uh, I just spoke uh, to, to Dan, uh, who I just met, and he said that he's going through a course and, and studying about leadership. Uh, the, the name of the book was what, Dan? Jesus. Jesus on leadership. I love meeting people that say, you know what, I'm studying about leadership. They're being intentional, they're doing something about it, and they're not taking the leadership uh, area, whether we, we're, we're leading at home, we're leading in our families, we're leading in our church. They're not taking it as an automatic process. Growth is not automatic. Okay, that's what I want you to remember. Growth is not automatic. So uh, I wanted to share with you a story. Uh, in March 4th, it was a Saturday in 1865, uh, President Lincoln stood on the uh, uh, east portico of the White House. Has anybody seen the White House uh, before? You've seen the White House? Right. Uh, March the 4th, uh, 1865 was a momentous uh, date. A month from that date, he would die. He would be shot. Uh, and that day... Uh, uh, he, uh, he, he gave his inaugural speech. He was just elected the second time. Uh, at that point, about close to half a million to three quarters of a million people had died in the country. It was a time that was very, very difficult. Uh, and he stood out there, and it was rainy, and it was muddy, and uh, he, sh he said the short speech, uh, a very short speech, but I love that speech. And I'm going to read you the last paragraph of it, and that's just going to illustrate uh, one point for us. Uh, okay, here's what the last paragraph of his speech is, okay? And this is one of the great leaders that we know of. He said, with malice toward none. As you know, malice means ill will. Now, this is a guy who just headed uh, the union, and there was a lot of hate and a lot of killing. Somebody would actually kill him, okay? He said, with malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right, let us strive on to finish the work we are in. Now listen to this. He said, to bind up the nation's wounds, okay, and to care for him who shall have borne the battle. So he said, we're going to care. Guys, he looked at everybody. And he said, guys, we are going to care for that southern man who killed us. Okay, he said, to care for him who should have borne the battle and for his widow and his orphan. And I mean, do you get a picture of what kind of leader he is? Okay, he said, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. You know, when I read this, I just kind of stopped. And there's a bi biography actually entitled With Malice Toward None. If you haven't read it, it's really great. Okay, and the question I, I ask when I read that is, you know, what kind of a process does it take to produce a leader like that, you know? This guy was a difference maker. He made a difference in our history, in our lives, and, uh, and, and the question for you and me today is, do we want to make a difference, you know? I know it's a very kind of, uh, you know, cliche kind of a word, but it, it really matters. Do we want to make a difference in our businesses, in our families? in our churches, in our teams? Do we really want to make a difference? And how do we do that? Okay, I'm going to give you the answer tonight. The answer is personal growth. Okay, personal development. We've got to develop ourselves. And when you read the story of, of Abraham Lincoln, he was born of a poor family. Uh, he, he was not educated. He actually went to school one year. Okay, and uh, but he was an avid reader, and we're going to talk here about reading and how we, how we would grow. He was an avid reader. There was a story about him when he was a kid, he would plow, you know, he would uh, ride behind the, the cow or whatever, you know, the animal was, and uh, he would have a book with him, and toward the end of the line, he would just sit there for a minute, take a little break, and read, and then come back, and then do that, you know what I mean? So, and he, he was just an avid reader all his life, and he developed himself early in his life. He was very, uh, you know, an, an angry man, and, you know, very kind of, uh, you know, he couldn't handle his emotions. Later in his life, you read that, you know, he got better, he, you know, he led better. Uh, all his generals uh, were really, you know, uh, not very good generals. Uh, all the good generals uh, went with the South, as you guys may know. Uh, so, 
uh, he was very patient with him. He was, uh, he was able to, to be hard when he needed to. Anyway, he developed himself. So the question to you and me today, I know we're busy, and, and here today we have all sorts of you know, representations. We have a nursing manager, we have a, a president, uh, we have a business owner, we have uh, mothers and fathers. We all have people around us that we need to influence and lead, okay? And for us to do that effectively, okay, we've got to grow, okay? Are you guys with me? Yes. Okay, all right. So what I'm going to share with you today is what I feel, uh, at least what's been my experience with personal growth and how I do it, okay? All right, sounds good. So let's get in our notes, and uh, we're going to start here on page, uh, let's take a look here. Uh, page 9. <coughs> okay. So, uh, principle number one that uh, we want to go over is it says this. I have to want to grow. Okay, so if you want to fill in the blank there, the word is grow, all right? And that is the most important thing that I want to talk to you about. Now, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to share with you another page here. Actually, the page right before it, page 8. If you look at it with me, and this is the schematic of everything I'm going to tell you today, okay? And then toward the end, I'm going to ask you to make a commitment with me, okay? Not to accept Christ, but uh, this is another kind of commitment. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is to make it very simple. So step one, do I want to grow so I can make a difference, okay? Do you guys want to grow? I mean, have I made a small point here today? Yes. So that's a yes. If you answered no, you go to the other side. It says TV, couch, and Twinkies, okay? You're not going to be effective, Okay, you're not, okay? No one's going to, okay, all right. Step number two, all right, step number two is be exposed to and look for new ideas, thoughts, and principles. Now, the fact that you're here today tells me that you value this step. You want to be exposed to new ideas, thoughts, or principles. Hopefully, we'll give you something new that you haven't thought about today. But in the, in the, in the line of growth, we've got to have step number two, which is just exposure to new things, okay? Step number three is collecting it, okay? Because if we don't collect it, we forget it. And we're going to talk about this here in a minute, okay? And step number four, and this may not be something you do, uh, but uh, this is something I do, and I learned from... John Maxwell, who's a, uh, a leader uh, and a teacher on leadership. Uh, so everything I collect, I file it in a, in a certain system so I can find it. Now, a lot of people you know, would stop at either number two or number three. Some may go to number four. Uh, and a lot of us don't do number five, OK? We don't apply it in a systematic way. Now, a lot of us say, oh, yeah, I'm going to try to apply it. But what method do you have to apply it, okay? We're going to talk about that, okay? All right. And number six is teaching it, all right? If we don't teach. So this is kind of the schematic that I want you to keep in your mind. And if you get stuck on any one of these steps, you're just not going to move forward as aggressively as you can, okay? So let's, let's go ahead and uh, go back to the notes. So the first step is I uh, have to want to grow, all right? So why should we grow is the question. All right. So, some may say, you know, I don't want this business. I just want to go do my job. You know, just can you just stop? And some people do tell me that. Some people, you know, close to me, and you know, so that's okay. Uh, but here's why I think we should grow, other than what I talked about. Number one is to have success. Okay, that's the word there. All right. This is a statement that's very powerful. It says, personal growth precedes precedes professional growth. All right. If you don't take anything from this whole four hours today, just take this statement. Personal growth precedes professional growth or relationship growth or marriage growth or parenting growth. You want to be a better parent? Let's work on your personal growth. That's what we got to do. All right. So this is extremely important. Number two, OK, is to resolve problems. All right. Um, how many of you have some kind of a problem right now in your life? I know I do. 
Anybody can you know, say, hey, I have an issue I can solve? Okay, all right. Here's, here's a principle that, that I learned that I want to share with you, okay? Usually, it says here, we, we usually deal with problems and struggles, number one, either by giving up. That's one approach. Okay, that's one word there. Number two, we blame someone else. And that's something that we all tend to want to do. Okay, no exception. All right. Or we try harder. Okay. We try harder. Say, hey, let me wake up early. Let me do this. Let me try harder. Okay. I don't think any of those are the best solution. Now, we, you know, we got we to gotta do at least try harder sometime. Uh, but we don't want to be giving up and blaming others. So here's the answer is number B. Our most difficult problems usually cannot be solved. They have to be, can I, anybody guess what this word should be? They have to be outgrown, okay? We've got to grow, and then the problem will just go away, all right? And here's a statement right here. Problems are matters that we don't know how to handle. Grow and learn to handle them, and they will not be problems anymore. I know this is very simplistic, you know, but it's the truth, you know. Uh, Jack and I, you know, joke all the time. We say, is this hard to do? And he usually tells me, what do you usually tell me, Jack? When you say... <laughs> we, <laughs> sorry, I should have warned you. You know, we, we basically joke and, and you say, it's not hard for somebody who knows how to do it, right? There is nothing hard. That's right. There, and you taught me that. And he says there is nothing hard for somebody who knows how to do it. Is that right? That's right, yeah. That's right. So whatever problem you have today, there's somebody out there that it's not a problem for, okay? Right? right? If it's not a problem for the other person, it's a problem for me, then who's the problem? I say something. I say I'm the problem, not the problem. Mm -hmm. Okay? And if we start looking at our problems that way, really we have so much hope and we have so much resolution in our life, okay? So we have to outgrow our problem. We look internally and say, how can I grow? I'm going to read you some of these uh, great statements here. <clears throat> so this is uh, from Carl Jung, the, uh, the Swiss um, uh, psychiatrist and psychologist. This is, this is from him. He said, our most important problems cannot be solved they have to be outgrown. The most important problems. What are your most important problems today? Okay, think about it. Here's another one. Jim Rohn, a great guy. Men are anxious to improve their circumstances, but are, are unwilling to improve themselves. They, therefore, remain bound. We all want to have something changed, but do we want to change ourselves? James Allen says, don't wish it were easier. Wish you were better. And Brian Tracy says, I believe through learning and application of what you learn, you can solve any problem, overcome any obstacle, and achieve any goal that you can set for yourself. Okay? What do you guys think about this message? Doesn't it give us hope that we can do it? Right? Okay? So let's grow. In whatever way you want to influence, whether, you, whether you're a pastor, whether you're a, uh, you know, a mother, whether you're a wife, if you want to have bigger punch, bigger influence to really help people, start working on yourself. Number three, why should we grow? To make a difference, okay? And Socrates says, let him that would move the world first move himself, you know? Don't you guys agree? Sometimes the hardest, the hardest things I've ever tried to do is, uh, you know, is just work on myself, you know, try to improve myself. That's really the hardest thing for me. And uh, so we just got to remember that. All right. Motivation for our personal development is a conviction that there is value in our dream. And, and this is honestly uh, huge for me. You know, four years ago, uh, I had gone through medical school and I did my schooling and I did what I'm supposed to do and, you know, I was successful, whatever. But uh, something happened. I met a gentleman, his name was Peter Rami, you know, and he taught me the principle we're going to be teaching today, later, uh, the personalities. And that thing really kind of helped me out at business and my life. It really made a difference in my life. And all of a sudden, I said, you know what? I want to do that for others, you know? I want to do that for others. I, like he helped me, I want to help others, you know? Uh, you know, yes, it's great. I'm going to go, uh, you know, uh, be a doctor and open your mouth, say, ah, all of that. But, you know, I want to go beyond that. I want to make a difference, you know what I mean? I wanna... So the question to you guys, I mean, do you really want to make a difference? What is your life about, you know? What is my life about? 
Is it just to, you know, make some money, you know, take care of our family and die? You know, is this, is this a story for our life? Is this, is this it? That, is that it? Or is there something more? If there's something more, we can't do more if we don't grow. So, so number, uh, number three is to make a difference, okay? All right, guys. Number four, to have meaning, which is similar. Also, Socrates says, the unexamined life is not worth living, and I agree with that. And number five, and finally here, why we should grow is to have hope, to have hope. And, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm, a, uh, I'm a person of faith. I have hope in God first. Uh, I have hope in, in my spiritual, uh, you know, kind of view of the world. But I believe God put this in front of me. I said, hey, you know, you want to make a difference in the church? You want to make a difference in people's lives? Let's start, let's start rolling here. Let's start growing, okay? So, so that's, that's, that's the fifth thing, uh, you know, to give us hope. So uh, hopefully we've kind of made a small point of why we should grow. And then uh, as we move forward, I'm going to uh, tell you, you know, how I do it. Alrighty? So uh, real quickly here, we'll just go over this page, and then we'll get to the more practical stuff. So why don't we grow? Uh, we, we don't have a learning attitude, all right? And there are three kinds of people. The unlearned, those who don't care, okay, the unlearned. The learned, those who know it all, you know, and how many of us, you know, know that kind of a person, you know, right? Uh, any of us being seated next to that person? No? Okay, okay. <laughs> all right. Okay, so that's the learned. All right. And the one, and the ones still learning. The ones still learning. All right. And... Uh, what I wanted to share with you here on this, the ones to learning, uh, you guys have heard of Michelangelo. He has a very famous uh, statement uh, in, in Latin. And uh, uh, the, the, the statement, and it slipped my mind in Latin, but uh, in English, the translation, he says, I'm still learning. And he says that all the time. The first public uh, record of when he said that, he was 87. Okay, he was 87, all right? So I'm still learning is the attitude that we want to be in, okay? Uh, you know, we all go to professional school and whatnot, and we think learning has ended. I believe that's when learning should start, okay? That's, how, that's when we should start digging deeper and say, how can we become like that man that we read about, you know, Abraham Lincoln, you know what I mean? He never went to school. He did all the growth himself, all right? So, all righty. Let's keep going here. Um, we, we don't know what to grow in. Uh, that's another area uh, why we don't grow. And uh, here are so, some suggestions. Okay, you say, okay, uh, Wes, uh, what do I grow in? I mean, you know, come on, I'm busy, you know. I'm gonna, number one is problems. We already talked about problems. List the problems you have in your life, whatever it is. Let's say it's your kid, whatever, it's uh, your team, uh, it's your boss. It's your health, whatever it is, okay? You gotta grow on that, okay? We're talking about leadership today, so you know, if it's something related to people, uh, would would be right on target with this talk, but anything, okay? Uh, Zig Ziglar said, the next time you encounter a difficult obstacle or problem, you should smile and say, here's my chance to grow. So problems, okay? Number two is strengths. We wanna work on our strengths because that's how we make a difference, okay? And uh, number four, or number three, uh, is weakness. You know, we don't want to focus too much on our weakness, but we definitely want to address those weaknesses. And just to illustrate something to you, if you flip back to uh, page six for me. Uh, now, when we get to the filing section, um, this will make more sense to you. Basically, anything that I learn, and today I'm going to sit back down, and when the other speakers are going to go, I'm going to be taking notes. And I'm going to file them under these categories. Now, these are about 200 categories I file under, okay? So if you taught me something about discouragement, timer, like, you know, when I meet with you, I come back home and I file it under there, okay? All right. Now, I have about 500. I picked 200, okay? I wanted to read them to you. It, it, uh, when I practiced, it took me about two, two and a half minutes. But I want to, and you may not capture everything, but I wanted to, to mention to you how many areas we can grow in. I know it's kind of funny. But I just want you to listen. Okay, these are just some areas. And if you pick any one of those and you grow in, you're going to make a difference. All right? So anybody has a stopwatch? <laughs> that could, uh, anybody can time me? iPhone? And if you see something that interests you, circle it. Say, hey, I want to grow in that. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to finish it, and you tell me if I, I did it under two and a half minutes. Oh, okay. All right? Okay. Hopefully, I won't pass out. Okay. You ready? Yeah, okay. Okay. Accountability, achievement, adding value, ad admitting mistakes, adversity, advice, affirmation, anger, asking for help, autonomy, balance, believing in people, believing in yourself, blaming others, body language, boldness, boundaries, branding, bucket filling, budget, building others, bullies, change, clarity, coaching, committees, communication, company growth, compensation, competition, complaining, compromise, conflict resolution, confrontation, connecting, contentment, control, conviction, correction, courage, crisis management, cr criticism, culture, customers, deadlines, debate, decision making, dedication, delegation, details, developing people, difficult conversation, disappointment, discipline, discouragement, dissension, division, doing the right thing, doing your best, dreaming, effectiveness, efficiency, emotional maturity, empathy, empowering others, encouragement, enlarging others, enthusiasm, evaluating people, excellence, execution, expectations, failing, fear, feedback, feelings, finishing, focus, forgiveness, forward progress, frustration, gentleness, getting started, getting advice, getting credit, giving, giving up on people, giving, goals, God, gossip, grace, gratitude, greed, growing, growth plan, growth resources, habits, happiness, hard work, hardships, Harmony, healing, health, helping others, hiring, honesty, hope, how to deal with difficult people, how to treat others who hurt you, human resources, humility, ideas, imagination, imperfection, indifference, influence, inner circle, innovation, inspiring others, integrity, intuition, investing in others, information, technology, ju uh, judging, kindness, knowing, doing, gap, knowledge, learning, legacy, listening, love, loyalty, lying, uh, making tough decisions, marketing, maturity, meetings, mentoring, mercy, mission, momentum, morale, motivating people, navigating, negativity, negotiating, networking, optimism, organization, passion, patience peace, people above all, perception, perfection, performance, perseverance, persistence, pessimism, planning, pleasing people, preparation, pride, principled living, priorities, proactivity, procrastination, producing, professionalism, reacting, problem solving, process improvement, pro uh, profit, the purpose, quality, reading, reflecting, regret, relationship, resilience, respect, responsibility, reality, recruiting, retention, retirement, reward, risk, sacrifice, sales, self-awareness, selfishness, sensitivity, serving others, significance, silence, simplicity, sincerity, slowing down, starting now, social media, staying calm, strength, strategy, succession, planning, systems, taking risks, taking, talking behind people's back, talking less, teaching, termination, uh, resolve, uh, th team building, teamwork, timelessness, thinking, time management, tolerance, trust, urges, Values, vigilance, vision, waste, weakness, and whining. <laughs> Woo! How many? Two minutes, 16 seconds. All right. Oh. OK, that's incredible. OK, all right, OK. All right, guys. So any, you pick one of those guys, and you grow in that, and you're going to make a bigger difference. OK, all right. So, so I just wanted to illustrate just how many things we can grow in. OK, let's go back to our notes. All righty. Now, when do we grow is the question, all right? I'm sure you guys have heard of this. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Okay, so when do we grow? When we realize we really want to, okay? When we realize we really want to. How does one become a butterfly? We must want to fly so much that you are willing to give up being a caterpillar. Number two, when we realize that we are the problem, like I mentioned, it's a day of re being reborn when we realize that we are the problem. Believe me on that, okay? I already told you, I'm the problem, not the problem. D.L. Moody, the, the great evangelist, said, I have never had more problems with another man or woman than I've had with myself, all right? Number three, when we realize, I'm sorry, when we quiet, when we quiet our spirits and say to ourselves, maybe there is a key there to move him to the next step. And I ask you here right now, I mean, you're sitting here, you know, listening to this, and you may have had a long day or whatnot, but what's going on through your head right now? I think what hopefully all of us today hear and say, you know what, I may learn nothing here, but there may be a key here to changing my life. And if that's the attitude we have, just kind of quiet down, you know, stop, you know, say, ah, this is not good, that's not good. You know, just listen. Just listen, you know. This is really key for learning and growing, okay? All right. All right. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to go to number four now. Uh, when we realize that growth is one of the few things that lasts, okay, it really does. Be growth-oriented instead of goal-oriented. We all, we all talk about goals. You know, it's great to, to, to achieve goals. You know, a few years ago, we had a goal in our clinic to, to have, you know, four clinics in a few years, you know, and we met that goal, and it was great, you know. 
But you know what? Now we're back to two clinics. You know, it happens. It's business. You know, uh, what did I take from those four years? You know, uh, really, what I took from it, honestly, and I'm mean, being very personal with you here, is what I'm teaching you today. You know, is is is, is those things, those principles that I wrestled with and I struggled with and I applied and I shared with others. That's what stayed with me. You know, if I've made a little bit of a money. You know, you put them in the stock market and they're gone. I mean, they're not going to stay with you. But what's here in your, your brain, because unless you have a stroke or something, is going to stick with you, okay? All right, so that's very important. Okay, uh, so statement here, it is easy to, to lose what you've earned. It is hard to lose what you've learned. Oh, you've learned, okay? All righty. And number five, <clears throat> when do we grow? When we are humble and have a teachable spirit. So the words there are humble and teachable. Okay. <clears throat> One of the great books uh, recently that was written, they said uh, they were rating uh, leaders from one to five. And they said the best leaders out there, the number five leaders, you know what quality they had? Humility. Humility. Okay. Humility. Why? Because when you're humble, you, uh, you talk to people. You know, uh, when there's a problem, you know, you bring help, you, uh, you know, humility. Humility is really key to learning and moving forward, okay? Number six, when do we grow? When, when we leave our comfort zone, okay? Comfort zone is the word there, comfort. So growth and discovery are often accompanied by a degree or, uh, or two of, of discomfort. So we got to do that. Number seven, we leave uh, or, or we grow when we develop a growth plan, and that's what I'm going to share with you guys today is, hey, okay, you're talking about growth. How do we do it? Okay, I'm going to share with you at least what I do. Okay, so when we develop a growth plan and a learning system. Okay, all right. And uh, <clears throat> number eight, uh, when we think we have room to grow. Again, we kind of talked about this, but do you think you have room to grow? Yes, yes, yes. Is a resounding yes? Okay, you've, you've got to say yes. Okay, all right. So the quote here is: "Is no matter what the level of your ability, you have more potential than you have ever that you can ever develop in a lifetime." There are no great limits, uh, President Reagan said. There are no great limits to growth because there are no limits of human intelligence, imagination, and wonder. So there is room to grow. And number nine, when we realize we need it for our professional survival and advancement, hopefully we don't have to get there, you know. But I've seen this so many times at work, haven't you, where, you know, your team is moving forward. This one individual is not. I mean, don't you, Tamara? You know? And you want to help them, or you, but, but you can't, you know. So if you don't grow, you've got to go, you know. That's the saying. And uh, so we've got to grow. Hopefully we don't get there, but that's one reason we do it, all right. And number 10, when we are challenged, this is when we grow. And hopefully you allow me today to challenge you today and say, you know what, are you growing? Maybe you're growing. Maybe you're growing more than me. Great. You know, but I want to challenge you today. Okay, let's grow. So challenge yourself. If you're unchallenged, you are unchanged. Some stretch with challenges, some are unchanged with challenges, and some shrink with challenges. Okay, if we shrink a little bit, that's okay, guys. But I want to encourage you today, let's stand up, okay, and let's do this together. All right?